It's very seldom. <laughs> um, I met her at an open house, at a very small open house. The bigger open house is like Lange Nacht im Museum. Bring us about 2,000 visitors, as many to compare it, as many as the Ars Electronica Linz has. But the Ars Electronica is about 50 times as big as our headquarters. So you can imagine that it is crowded. It is only crowded. And of course, you are invited to come anytime you like. Just call and we can arrange it. And then it is not so crowded. And bring your friends, bring your children, and we can show you around. Um, this is Philip Greiner. He is the manager of several pro programs and kind of my was is gewissen? Conscience. Conscience. <laughs> Conscience. I'm Jiminy Cricket. That's my name. <laughs> <laughs> so he sometimes uh, brings me down and sometimes he yes, helps me focus him. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think he will tell you about his project a little later on. <coughs> Maybe we could switch the lights off. It is a very, very short and small presentation. Is that enough? Yes. Yeah, great. Only to introduce some kind, some, some things about science school. Okay. So we consist mainly of three parts. Um, it is science pool family events and non-profit is not correct. It is the profit part of science pool where companies um, order us to make events in their family, in, in their companies, um, Christmas events, family days and so on. Um, science pool VEF is the non-profit part where we um, work with schools and kindergartens. And the science school um, is, in behind, is in process. We are founding it for um, founding an institute for further education for um, Wissenschaftsvermittlung because we teach teachers, we train trainers, and we do it in a very, very large amount. And of course, our explainers are trained as well. They undergo go an education that lasts about two semesters, and then they are allowed to work with children. So the people who explain things to children are very well educated by us. And they are young scientists too. Möchtest du das sagen? Nein. No. Okay. Yes, there are uh, the parts of science school we are in Vienna. In Vienna we run as well the Museum der Nerdigkeit, also the Nerd Museum. Uh, where we show a lot of exhibits uh, that needs to be, to, to have some kind of thinking which well, Jeremy Cooper would like it. <laughs> so we have sandboxes that are virtual, we have <coughs> different kinds of small and big and very large exhibits. You have to try out, you have to work with, you have even to construct, because some of our um, children and pupils and students even construct the exhibits that are visited <coughs> by visitors later. Of course, we are in no Austria, in Warland and <coughs> uh, in Kärnten. So Science School um, runs half of Austria. <laughs> we are responsible for the science education. No. Good. Some figures. In our school programs, in our headquarters, we have about 10,000 students with the teachers in different workshops. And uh, we provide additional science education to schools. We don't replace the science education, but we add 
certain views and certain experience to it. And often the teachers are very happy to come to us because there are things they cannot do in their classes and they don't know. Um, 20 cars are necessary because we are in the Österreichische Burgenland in Kärnten. And so we have to send our people all around uh, Austria. 11,000 single appointments. 35,000 students are very interesting because we uh, provide education to them in afternoon classes. So they have once a week a class at the schools where they can go and where they have uh, a new um, experiment uh, every week. And we have, at the moment, we have about 120 to 130 staff members. Um, yes, and the uh, major public events are really, really big. So I can mention, for example, the Lange Nacht der Forschung, you know them. Uh, we have about 60,000 visitors at the Lange Nacht der Forschung. We have 15,000 at the Rathaus. At the moment, we are at the Christkindl market, at the Rathaus, and so on. Uh, these events are very, very uh, important because we can reach children we would not reach because uh, they are from, from families that are not so educated, so well educated. And so they get in contact with the first steps of science. Okay. Oh yes, this chart is made. Mm -hmm. uh, we tried to show how we influence each other and influence other uh, parts of the society. So of course, arts and culture, of course, social science, science, economy. Everybody pro uh, profits from children who are interested and children who are very well educated. And I often discuss, discuss with uh, people from the ministries that is, oh, children, it's no science. But if you don't provide children science and education, you will never get scientists. Mm -hmm. So they forget that children are the most important source we have. And if we uh, are sad about uh, the lack of scientists in Austria, we have to try to get more scientists and that not to say children, oh, what, what you do it is not it is worthless because it's only childish. It is not childish. Children are not childish. Okay, yeah, these are some some words about hands-on and innovative and mean and didactic. And I think we mm -hmm. will talk about some of his projects. Yes. Um well, first of all, hello, and from my behalf as well. Uh, my name is Philip Greiner, as you already heard. Um, I am a project leader for various of our projects. You already heard that we are quite widespread with the different activities that we have. Uh, just for me, as per you know, how did I start at the science pool? How did I get into science communication education? Um, I have a master's degree in molecular biology, but um, throughout my time as a researcher and also throughout my education, I realized that um, the value of the science is not measured by how good your research is, but how well it is communicated and applied to the society. And um, when Galinda just said, um, people tend to forget that when we work um, on science projects, hands-on experiments with children, we say it's just childish science. Um, but we need the, those scientists later on. It's not just that we need those scientists, but we also need a society that is aware of the, of the necessity of doing scientific research. So what we are creating is not merely a lot of new scientists in those mint areas, but also people who maybe won't become scientists later on, but are aware of the relevance and um, the necessity of having a discussion in the society. So that's, that was my initial inspiration to say let's not just do science but also let's talk about science and communicate the importance of it. And on the, on the top left you have the low threshold which is um, basically very important as Galina just put out those big events that we have 
we can get children who just pass by the Christkindl mark, for instance, and they say, all right, this looks interesting, it's colorful, something's happening, what is it, let's see it, oh, it's a scientific experiment, I didn't know that scientific experiments could be as much fun, and the first step is already taken. Um, from then onwards, we have those science clubs, science schools, which are, which are kind of complementary um, afternoon courses for the regular science um, courses that are already done in school during the day. What we try to do is, in every, every lesson goes for 50 minutes, and we, we pick a subject matter. For instance, today we have a uh, refraction of light. And then we, we try to find a way um, how to communicate the whole idea to the children through something that they do hands-on themselves. So they work on a project and while doing that they become aware of the issue or of the topic that we chose for that lesson. Um, the interesting part is that there is no patent to this is how it works, but it's very much about finding a new um, connection with those kids that you're working with in every session that you do and that's why it's so important for us that we focus a lot on um, the education, the qualification of our tutors so they learn various skills and various um, techniques on how to bring those subjects across to children and there's a lot of in, uh, internal feedback where we find out, oh we, oh, we are still learning, you know, we do education but we're also educating ourselves through that process and it's very, very interesting to be part of that, to go into schools and to see that happening and the energy that's being created so the kids give us something back as well. So we also do research while researching with the kids in that respect, so it's multi-layered in that, in that aspect. Um, from then onwards, we, we managed to kind of create um, a more science-aware um, youth, if you will. They don't necessarily have to become scientists, and, but later on, when there are projects um, that offer, for instance, in, in, in secondary school, um, uh, non-obligatory science courses, back in the years when I was still at school, um, the, there were maybe two nerds, you know, who did those things, but it was not really a big thing. But if the awareness, the barrier that we create towards, oh, this is science, someone in a lab coat behind closed doors is researching, that's something for those, but not for me. Um, that's a barrier that's only in our minds and only in our perception. And that's the barrier that we get rid of when we're working with the kids in primary school. And then later on they're going to be like, oh, chemistry workshop sounds interesting and not, oh, this is too complex or complicated for me. And one of the projects that I'm currently running is called the Science Fair. Science Fair may be a concept that you are aware of, um, which is very, very um, popular in the US, for instance, but not really existent in, in Austria. We're doing it in uh, Lower Austria right now, where we connect um, secondary school students with university, uh, universities, with research institutes. We help them on finding topics where they then, over the course of the entire school year, work on a project together. So there's co-creation, there's synergies created between education and research, and it goes on there. So that's just a minor glimpse into all of those processes that we have. And the, the slide before, you saw how complex it was, and um, we could talk about this for hours. But what I'm trying to do is to give you this glimpse on, we start very low and t try to take those kids at their hands and take it step by step, but not grab them and pull them, but only say, all right, we are there for you, but you go that way for yourself. If you need help, I'll be there to support you. And that goes on, as um, Ms. Cohen said, from the from uh, kindergarten up until the matura. All right, you can go next slide. Okay. Yeah. You, you want to, or should I get you? As now we just have a few, few images, as you can, so you can see what kind of experiments do we do, and also um, the different formats, programs, if you will. So the science clubs and science schools are afternoon classes in kindergartens and primary schools. Basically, the, the, the main, main program where it more or less all originated is those 50 minutes workshops, 10 um, experiments or 10 sessions per semester. So it carries on from well, September, October until January. What's very important and interesting is that we decided that the last session is a presentation. Because if you do research, you have to present your results. 
And um, the interesting thing is that that's not just so the parents can be proud of, of watching their kids do, like they do a Christmas play or a gingerbread man or something like that, but it's also that it, it, it adds value for a kid's learning experience because you're only really understood a subject if you're able to communicate it to someone else. And through that, okay, now I have to think about it again. There's, a, there's some kind of reflection going on in their minds. Okay, what did I do? What did I learn? And how can I explain it to someone else? And once they get to that level, we can see, all right, they are they're working on it. Even if we're not showing them what they're supposed to do, they're working out a concept for themselves. So that's what happens at the science schools and the science clubs. You can show us the next slide. Um, I want that. Yeah. The science labs and the social labs are complementary to those science clubs. That's what happens at our place in the 11th district. It's basically um, when schools visit us with classes, they can stay there for two hours, for four hours, sometimes even for entire days. Um, especially for the older ones, for the secondary schools, we have a lot of social science labs where it's, for instance, as you can see, um, the young man at the bottom right uh, who's pregnant and holding a baby at that point. Um, so <laughs> he's, he's quite busy, I think. But he looks, he looks relaxed. So you can see um, in, 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 the middle, in the middle you can see some students wearing um, alcohol glasses and driving bobby cars around. It's not as easy as it looks. So, as you can see, social awareness or the, the impact scientific issues can have on our social life, you know, for instance, the, the thing with the pregnancy or the alcohol, we also try to put that in there because science is not just math and that's it, or physics and that's it, but the whole concept in itself. All right, thank you. And then you can see here a few pictures from the major public events, as we said, where there's not a school class or school students who come and visit us, but people in their free time just drop by, and you can see a few um, snapshots, if you will. Um, what do we have? Virtual reality on the top right. Um, at the bottom left, you have um, dry ice. So um, I think the bottom right, they're doing what we're going to be doing soon. Um, so yeah, as you can see, there's, there's a lot of different things that we do, and the kids are always engaging. And you, we don't have to go around and ask them, do you want to do an experiment? They come running towards us. And that's what shows us that the low threshold is actually very, very low. And yes? What are alcohol glasses? Our, our alcohol glasses, yeah, they, they basically simulate being drunk. So they kind of have like, um, um, differently, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. limited yeah. vision, um, you have prisms in there, everything's yeah. a bit darker, and you have them for various oh, levels. And so on. Yeah. Um, so yes. that they understand what it is like to drive under the influence. Yes. Exactly, yeah. So there's no alcohol in them, they're just <laughs> simulating. <laughs> All right, yeah, but I think, um, yeah, we can keep going. Um, yeah. Here you can see a few of our partners who we work with. I guess I'll leave it to you now and then to finish up, and they, then we can... It's finished. Work. All right. I think now the exciting part starts. Can we yes. ask questions? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, because, please, uh, first of all, uh, one question for me uh, is, because you're doing this in Austria, that means in German only. No, in or, or do you watch also an international? Yeah. And my then, English is very rusty, but <laughs> uh -huh. many of my friends <coughs> yeah. are absolutely fluent in English, and so they do it in English. So, uh, would you also work with the international schools? Yes, of course. Uh, so, you have already connections, and then probably you are aware that uh, with the uh, Within the IEA, we have another organization where WIN actually also contributes to, that's the INMM, Institute of Nuclear Material uh, mm -hmm. Management. Mm -hmm. And they are, every year, they are organizing this science fair. Are you involved in this? Because I haven't seen you there, no. and I'm quite active, so mm -hmm. I think that's actually a hint or a comment. If you approach the people there, uh, it might be a good idea to merge uh, yes, yes. or joint efforts. Yeah? We would like to, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I can send you the contact. Yes, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think this is always, uh, we are often acting as judges, mm -hmm. but it's not part, for example, of your uh, Matura certificate. Science. Well, some programs are. For some example, are. Okay. Some are. For example uh -huh. at the science fair in Niederösterreich, uh, the works are uh, part of the Diplomarbeiten or mm -hmm. the Vorwissenschaftlichen mm -hmm. Arbeiten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Vienna, we have uh, one school with four model classes where we uh, teach two lessons science a week. And yes. It's a, it's a bit of a two sided thing. Yeah. On the one hand, we don't want to be too much. Um, like there, there shouldn't be too much conflict with the regular curriculum. We want to be something complementary and we also want to take away um, the fear of the regular science yeah. basically. So um, when, when we keep ourselves a bit further to the background, we, we can push the regular curriculum, the re regular education a bit by that. Um, and then later on in the bigger uh, project, so to say, where the, those students individually put in a lot of effort, um, they can then take part in one of those projects that will then again circle back into the regular curriculum. So it's kind of a positive feedback loop where we first create the, the curiosity, which is then applied in the regular education, and through that, then they come back to us and do new projects. Yeah. Or we are... Um, a part of the jury for the meat single for schools mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so we of course we give our experience to the schools and then work <coughs> together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd just like to make a couple of comments that I forgot to say at the beginning. Um, two observations I made at this open day that really impressed me. One was how enthusiastic and how captivated the very small, all children, but the very small children were. And the other was the, um, the scientists, the educators who were responsible for the projects. They did not dumb down science at all. They were presenting very sophisticated projects sometimes, but in language that small children can understand. So they didn't use baby language. They didn't oversimplify the science, but the children got it. And this is a skill on behalf of you that yes. really impressed me. And if uh, you want to get a, a, a parent's or teacher's impression um, uh, of science pool, look, those of you who are at the agency, look at the, last, uh, the latest Echo. It only came out on Monday. There's a two-pager about... Um, this, uh, not only the open day, about science pool, uh, and this is the reason that I so strongly support them. I was just so impressed with their approach. I think that the international community and the, the international schools should know about it because I think it could be very useful to them, especially this after school yeah. program. So I leave the floor for any other questions now. Which is um, one word. Of course, we have to simplify, but everything has to be correct. So that's the art to simplify, but to stay on the path of correctness. And so you have to find the right approach to it. Uh, just a follow-up on that. Uh, do you produce any materials for the public on science, like animations or brochures or videos that you would explain some concepts in the simplified version? It's a prism, but I've never seen the foil like that. Um, they do make, make glasses for um, laser shows um, where they then um, refract the light, and that's where they use that foil, as, as far as I know. And we make we have various versions of those glasses. Those are the Stars light Stars versions, Stars. so to say. Yeah. We have bigger ones where you actually have star-shaped glasses, and then you can uh, create. But the, the question now is, what do you see, what do you experience when you look through it and look into the light? So we're not going to tell the kid what they see. They're going to look, and they're going to tell us what they see. So what, what do you see? A rainbow. A rainbow. Rainbows. Rainbows, <laughs> yeah. But why do we see the rainbows? Does the, the I don't know. Does the prism <laughs> create <laughs> the rainbow? People by making that, yeah. but maybe by science. Science. Mm -hmm. Very sweet.